Hi everyone, it's Professor Crimson. In this video, we're going to talk about related rates and business problems. So in the previous couple of videos, we talked about the fundamentals of related rates problems. So we talked about how to solve related rates problems involving a geometric formula. And in the last video, we talked about related rates problems and motion problems. And now we're going to finish up our discussion on solving application problems from business, economics, social science, life science, and physical sciences using related rates. So related rates in business. In the next couple of examples, we're going to look at some application of related rates as they arise within the business world. One of the more important concepts in business is the relationship between the price and the demand of a particular commodity. If the price increases or decreases, how does that affect the demand for a company? So example nine, we're going to look at the price and demand rates of change. A company has determined the demand curve for their product is given as this function. Q equals the square root of the quantity 5,000 minus P squared, where P is the price in dollars and Q is the quantity in millions of their product. If weather conditions are driving the price up $2 a week, find the rate at which the demand is changing when the price is $40. So the two variables are given in the problem. The P is representing the price of the commodity, and Q is representing the demand of the commodity. So let's start with the equation. We know that we need to rewrite radical functions so that they are a fraction power. So the square root of 5,000 subtract P squared is really the quantity 5,000 minus P squared to the one-half power. And so now note, P and Q, they are both functions of time. So the time is based on week. So the demand or the quantity Q will change based on time. And the price is also changing based on time. So whenever you take the derivative of P, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is P. So the derivative of the inside function would be P prime. And then the derivative of Q, anytime you take the derivative of Q, you have to multiply by the chain rule Q prime. So the given information in the problem is that weather conditions are driving the price up or increasing $2 a week. So P prime or DP DT is two. And they're asking us in the problem to find what is the rate at which the demand is changing. So that's Q prime or DQ DT when the price is $40. So when P is equal to 40. So since we have an equation that's given in the problem and P and Q are functions of time, we need to use implicit differentiation again to take the derivative with respect to time T on both sides of the equation. So the equation was Q equals the quantity 5,000 subtract P squared all to the one half power. Take the derivative of the left side with respect to T. So D D T of Q equals the derivative with respect to T on the right side of the equation. D D T of 5,000 subtract P squared to the one half power. So the derivative of Q with respect to T is Q prime. Now the derivative of the right side of the equation. Notice you have a composite function. You have a function on the inside of the parentheses that's raised to the one half power. So you have to use the general power rule and the chain rule. So one half is the exponent. Take it down to make it a coefficient. Now here's where the chain rule comes in. You have to keep the inside function as it is when you use the general power rule. So one half is the coefficient times 5,000 subtract P squared. Now subtract one from the power. So one half subtract one gives you negative a half. Now you have to use the chain rule, the derivative of the inside function. Well, the derivative of the inside function would be the derivative of inside the parentheses. So derivative with respect to T of 5,000 subtract P squared. And so now let's take the derivative of the inside function. You have one half times the quantity, 5,000 subtract p squared to the negative half. That stays the same. The derivative of the inside function, derivative of 5,000 is zero because 5,000 is a constant. And now the derivative of negative p squared. Notice that p is a function of time t. So p squared is the composite function. So we have to use the chain rule here too. So the derivative of negative p squared is negative 2p times the derivative of the inside function because p is the inside function. Take the derivative with respect to t of p. And so now just do a little bit of simplifying. One half times negative two is negative one. So you'll have Q prime is negative one P times the quantity 5,000 subtract P squared to the negative half power. And the derivative of P with respect to T is P prime. So notice that Q prime depends on knowing what the value of P is and P prime. So substitute in the values, P prime is two, that was given in the problem, and P is $40 into this equation. So Q prime is the opposite of P, so opposite of 40, times 5,000 subtract 40 squared for P squared to the negative half power, and then P prime is two. And now entering this into a calculator, you'll have negative 40 times the quantity 5,000 subtract 40 squared to the negative one half power, and then get out of the exponent times two for P prime. So you come up with negative 1.37 when you round the two decimal places, and so Q is representing the demand of the commodity. Q prime tells us how fast the demand is changing. So the demand is changing at negative 1.37 million per week.
So before we talk about the last example, let's do a little bit of reviewing. So before we do the last example, let's just do a little bit of reviewing. We've already talked about the cost function, the revenue function, and the profit functions as quantities that may either increase or decrease based on the production level of a certain commodity in previous sections. Now that we've talked about related rates problems, if we know the production level X changes with respect to time, then the cost function, the revenue function, and the profit function will also change with respect to time. So example 10, related rates and business. Suppose that the cost, revenue, and profit equations of the company manufacturing phones are given by the cost is C equals 88,000 plus 70X, the revenue is R equals 500X subtract X squared divided by 15, and profit is P of X equals R of X subtract C of X, or profit is revenue subtract cost, where X is the number of phones produced in one day. If the production is increasing at a rate of 900 phones per day, when the production output is 1,800 phones, find the rate of increase or decrease in the cost, the revenue, and the profit per day. So since we just mentioned that X is a function of time, the production level depends on time, then the cost, the revenue, and the profit functions are also composite functions because this is cost function depends on X, but X depends on time, T. Same thing for revenue, same thing for profit. So this cost equation is really depending on time. Revenue is depending on time, and the profit is depending on time, and the time is in days. So the given information in the problem, you have the production is increasing at a rate of 900 phones per day. So that's talking about X prime because it's production level changing. So X prime is 900 phones per day. But then you also have production output is 1,800 phones. Well, that's not talking about a rate of change. It's just production output. So that's just X. So X is 1,800 phones. Since we're asked to find what is the rate of increase or decrease in the cost, the revenue, and the profit, and we know that the cost, revenue, and profit are functions of time, we need to use implicit differentiation now to take the derivative with respect to time t. So let's start with cost. The cost was 88,000 plus 70x. Let's take the derivative with respect to t with, on both sides of the equation. So the derivative with respect to t on the left side of the equation, so ddt of c, is equal to the derivative of the right side of the equation with respect to t, so ddt of 88,000 plus 70x. So anytime you take the derivative of C, you have to use a chain rule to take the derivative of the inside function. And same thing with X. X is a function of time as well. So the derivative of the left side of the equation is derivative of C at C prime. The derivative of 88,000 is zero because it's just a constant. The derivative of 70X, well, keep in mind that 70X is a composite function because X is a function of time. So the derivative of 70X is 70 times the derivative of the inside function using the chain rule. So times the derivative of X with respect to T. And so now if you take the derivative, you'll have C prime is equal to 70 times the derivative of X with respect to T is X prime. So C prime is equal to 70 times X prime. So to know how fast the cost is changing, we just need to know what the value of X prime is. And that was given in the problem. So C prime is 70 times X prime is 900. So 70 times 900 will give you 63,000. So the cost is changing at $63,000 per day. Now the revenue function. The revenue function was given as r equals 500x subtract x squared divided by 15. So again, use implicit differentiation to take the derivative on both sides of the equation with respect to t. So the derivative of the left side of the equation, ddt of r, and take the derivative of the right side of the equation with respect to t. So the derivative with respect to t of 500x subtract x squared divided by 15. And now the same thing, r is a function of time and x is a function of time. So you have to use the chain rule because they are both composite functions. The derivative of r is 1 times the derivative of the inside function, which is r prime. Now the derivative of the right side of the equation. So the derivative of 500x is 500 times the derivative of the inside function. So times ddt of x and then subtract. So the derivative of x squared divided by 15, that's also a composite function because again, x is a function of time. So you have the derivative of the outside function and then also the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of the outside function would be take the derivative of x squared, that's 2x, and then also divide by 15, so negative 2 fifteenths x to the first power after you subtract 1 from the exponent. And now, don't forget, you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function because x squared was a composite function, so ddt of x. And now we have a couple derivatives. We have the derivative with respect to t of x twice. So r prime is 500 times the derivative of x with respect to t, that's x prime. Subtract 2 fifteenths x, and then derivative of x with respect to t is x prime again. So this time, if we want to find out what r prime is, we need to know what x prime and x is. And both of those values were given in the problem. So r prime is 500 times x prime was 900. x was the production output, or 1,800 phones. 
and x prime again is 900. After you calculate this value, r prime is 234,000. Or, in other words, the revenue is changing at $234,000 per day. And now we have one more rate of increase or decrease to find, and it's based on profit. Now, this one's not as bad. The profit is defined as revenue subtract cost. So if you take the derivative of the left side of the equation and the derivative of the right side of the equation with respect to time, then you can use the answers that we just came up with for revenue and cost. So the derivative with respect to time on the left side of the equation, so ddt of p, and then derivative with respect to time on the right side of the equation will be ddt of r subtract c. So the derivative of the left side of the equation is p prime. The derivative of the right side of the equation is r prime subtract c prime, because the derivative of r is r prime and the derivative of c is c prime. So we get this equation. The change in the profit is based on the change in the revenue, subtract the change in the cost. Well, we just found out the change in the revenue and the change in the cost in the previous work. So the change in the profit would be the change in the revenue, $234,000 per day. The cost was $63,000 per day. So it's $234,000, subtract $63,000, or the profit is changing at $171,000 per day. So this finishes our video on related rates and business problems. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about elasticity of demand.